In this video, we are dissecting the modern dish of pesto, exploring its ancient origin in the times of Roman antiquity. With that, we are seeing how much work it would cost to grow and forge all the ingredients ourselves, as well as make all the tools we use to make it. How much would a dish of pesto cost to make from scratch? Let's find out. What we eat today comes from generations of trial and error, accidental discovery, and an ever-expanding trade we are exploring the origins and the history of some of our favorite foods of today, as well as the tools were invented along the way to make them. My name is Andy, and this is How to Make Everything. Thanks to Acorns for sponsoring today's episode. Acorns is pretty much the best savings and investing app. Acorns has helped over 8 million people grow their money. Acorns will automatically invest spare change from your everyday purchases, from holiday gifts to gas to groceries and more. So when you buy a cup of coffee for $1.50, that extra 50 cents gets rounded up and gets sent directly to your Acorns investment account. Automatically set it and forget it with reoccurring investments so you don't have to think about it. No expertise required. Acorns diversified portfolios are designed by experts to help you maximize growth potential and weather markets ups and downs. And you get a pretty sweet heavy duty metal debit card that saves and invests for you instead of putting you in debt. You can also earn bonus investments from 350 plus brands as you shop or even find a job right in the app. And if you have kids in your life, invest for them too with Acorns Early. Get started in just five minutes and unlock investing, retirement savings, checking, earnings, and more. Go to acorns.com slash htme and get $5 off. Start investing today. The modern dish of pesto is believed to trace its possible origin to two different dishes, Genovan dish agliata in the Middle Ages made from garlic and walnuts, and even further back to ancient Rome with a dish called moretum. Moretum is named after the crucial tool used for making it, the mortarium, from which we get the origin of today's word mortar. A common instrument in the Roman kitchen, it's a specifically shaped large ceramic mortar bowl used for crushing and grinding substances. A few recipes for moretum exist in history, the earliest around the 1st century AD which offer a few different versions of it. Usually it consists of a collection of herbs and leafy greens, combined with garlic, olive oil, cheese, and nuts, then ground to a paste and often eaten on bread. Notably missing is what is the main ingredient of modern pesto, basil. While basil would originally only be natively found in the tropical areas of Southeast Asia and Africa, by the ancient Roman era, basil had already made its way to the Mediterranean and could be found as an ingredient used in some contemporary Roman cooking. However, the use of basil as the main plant in this ground dish was not commonplace until the mid-1800s when the modern version of pesto first emerged. So today we're going to explore a few aspects of this with the ancient recipe of moretum, as well as a modern form of this ancient pesto made with basil. We're going to try it both on an ancient Roman style of bread and the more modern pairing with noodles. First up, the eponym of the dish, the mortarium. A tool we've been needing for a while in our kitchen and other applications is a good mortar and pestle, which we are a little late to the game on as this tool has been in use for at least 35,000 years already. So I'm going to make two different types. One, the more traditional ceramic version of the specific mortarium, which has some unique attributes such as a built-in spout and a coarse sand texture on the inside to give it a rougher grinding surface. Then secondly, I'm also going to make a more general purpose mortar and pestle out of stone. A little bit harder of a surface should be usable for crushing even the hardest substances we might encounter in the future, making it a very helpful item to have in our arsenal. So we headed down to a stream to find some potential candidates for rocks. We're here at Minnehaha Falls to try to find a couple rocks to make a mortar and pestle. No good rocks over here. How about this guy? Looks pretty good. Ugh! Oh! Then, using our newest state-of-the-art Iron Age tech, worked on slowly chipping and grinding out a bowl shape with the iron chisel and hammer. Once roughed in, then proceeded to grind it a bit smoother by rubbing it with a pestle rock. Alright, so after making my own mortar and pestle, I made a second one 
to send to Max at Teasing History for him to try out with his own historical recipes. So be sure to check out his channel and see what he makes with it. Now for our ingredients. A common ingredient in both some versions of Moretum and modern pesto is pine nuts. So let's see if we can forage some. So there's only a few different varieties of pine trees that actually produce pine nuts. So using my deep knowledge of botany, I've been able to identify this tree with some pretty, pretty strong certainty that uh, this is a Swiss pine, Swiss stone pine, and that uh, is one that produces pine nuts. So we're gonna look around, see if there's any cones left over that the squirrels haven't gotten, and uh, add it to our mix. We're here at Mini. Uh, here's one. It's got. There's a nut. There's one. There's a pine nut. We got. Uh, we got one at least. Ta da! Right. Small little guy. It's a little bit bigger. Decent sized. Not a bunch of pine nuts just on the ground. Somebody's been chewing on them. Next, the main ingredient is a variety of leafy greens like lettuce and arugula, as well as herbs like chives, thyme, and parsley. So, for those, we're gonna turn to my indoor salad garden I worked on perfecting this year. as well as the small herb garden I planted this spring. Okay, so the ancient Romans used an ingredient that is very imperative and it was catnip. So luckily we have an expert on hand to help us find catnip. Let me go get her. Find the nip. <laughs> she has located some catnip. Thank you, Dobby. <laughs> Dobby, that was really cute. <laughs> Pretty exciting. Then this summer, I grew some garlic we should be able to dig up as well. For the olive oil, we previously went through the process of collecting, grinding, and crushing those when we made our oil lamp at the beginning of the year. For the cheese, we need to get some milk, as well as some of the apples we fermented to make vinegar. Gently heating the milk until it begins to become frothy, the vinegar can then be added to form curds. Then strained, and we have a basic ricotta. For the breaded noodles, I grew the ancient grain of spelt, a variety of wheat it was commonly eaten during ancient Roman times. Just about right, but not quite. To turn the grain into flour for bread and noodles, it needs to be threshed to release the seed from the stalks. Then winnowed with the wind to separate just the seeds from the chaff. Then the seeds are ground using our new stone mortar. Repeat a few times and we can begin our bread making. I'll be attempting a Roman style of bread called the Penis Quadratus, a type of bread that was actually found in the ruins of Pompeii.
then bake it in the cob oven. We made an original bread episode, which might be needing some repairs after it's been moved around a bit. Then for the noodles, it's a very similar start. All right. Flour. <laughs> All right, so with noodles, you don't want a lot of water. Coming in hot with a sit down. So we have our mortarum. We're gonna make our more more moritum. No, this is a moritum. The dish is the what was it? Moritum. Latin is not a language I speak. Moratum, mortem, mortarium, moratorium, mortuarium. So we have all the ingredients now. We have the mortarium, the garlic, pine nuts we harvested, olive oil we've previously crushed, some of the salt, variety of lettuce, catnip, parsley, thyme. and the ricotta cheese that I made. So compared to a modern one, what's obviously lacking is the basil. So after this, we'll try a modern version of it with basil and uh, see how they compare. So the more modern version of pesto is made with basil as a key ingredient. Gonna pick some leaves and start our more modern pesto. I'll leave the little leaf. Okay, so we're gonna make a more modern pesto using the basil that I have harvested. So this one's gonna have the pine nuts, basil, garlic, olive oil, salt, and then the ricotta. Lastly, for our control, to compare our ancient methods to, microwave pesto. So we have our different forms of pesto. We've got the proto pesto and the more modern pesto. Mix it with some noodles. We got our ancient Roman style bread, similar to what was found in Pompeii. We're gonna try it out, see how they compare. And then for comparison, we also have some microwave pesto. I made that. But before I try them, let's break down how much this pesto cost to actually make. First up, the tools, all the ceramic bowls, the bronze utensils, and the mortarium. Then the growing of the greens, herbs, and garlic, foraging of the pine nuts and catnip, the collection and production of the cheese, plus the olive oil, and putting it all together. That's just the pesto sauce. Next, the noodles and bread require their own time commitment to grow, process, prepare, and cook, adding the total cost of our dishes to $263. This is how it was generally eaten back then. Can say it didn't have noodles. Oh, it's pretty good. It's very, very fresh, very herby. It definitely tastes like the mint and everything else. You can definitely taste all the different herbs. It's very kind of complex taste. It tastes very green from all the lettuce. It's pretty good. Bread turned out pretty good too. I'm I like the bread. I'm gonna do the more modern pesto. So this one has the basil. I made this one, so it's probably way better. It's definitely a way different flavor I feel with the basil. A lot of strong flavors in this from all the different spices. It's Pretty equal. It's something a little ahistorical, but in our, our framework, we have invented noodles. And while noodles took a while to make it to actually Italy, we are going to try combining them both. So this will be pretty familiar to a modern pesto pasta, just with our handmade noodles, which uh, are a little unique because they, they're made out of spelt. Yeah. 
<laughs> pretty chewy. A little bit more chewier. Besides that, it's a very familiar to like a normal pesto pasta. I feel like you'd have to be like a real grain expert to notice the distinct flavor of spelt. I feel hip and healthy. All right, so then we got the ancient pesto. This did not exist, but we have combined two things that never really happened. <laughs> it's so sandy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of the sand in the mortarium got into it. It's a, a unique grit to it. <laughs> so I to say, they all turned out pretty good. Um, ignoring the grit. I hate to say it, but I think the microwave one turned out best. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. We're going to be doing a bunch more of food ones, digging into the history of a lot of common food items and where they kind of first came from. So if you want to see more of that, support us on Patreon so we can keep making videos. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.